Hi, I'm Ethan, the mushroom guy. If you're new to mushroom growing or just fascinated by the mycology world, you're watching the right video. I'm excited to walk you through the steps and the science of growing mushrooms and demystify the process so that you can try growing your own mushrooms at home or at the very least, become more knowledgeable about the nature and science behind growing mushrooms. First up, a question for you. What's the key ingredient for growing mushrooms? Any guesses? Anyone? I'll tell you, it's grain. Yep, grain, like the seed. Why? Because grain is the perfect food source for mushrooms. It's the foundation for strong, healthy mycelium. Mastering its use is the first step towards successful mushroom cultivation. Here's what you'll get out of this. We'll cover the basics of different types of grain. So you'll know what type is best for the different types of mushrooms. And then we'll cover how to inoculate grain using three different methods, liquid culture, agar, and grain to grain transfer. Finally, we'll show you how to expand colonized grain into bulk substrates like wood, CVG, dung loving mixes, and straw. If you walk away with one thing, it should be this. Understanding grain is the key to avoiding contamination, speeding up colonization, and ensuring bigger, healthier harvests. Enough talk, let's get started. Mushroom cultivation begins with a tiny organism. Either a small amount of mushroom mycelium mixed in a nutrient-rich solution, aka a liquid culture, or a small piece of mycelium from an agar plate, aka plate culture. But how is it that we go from this to this? For most mushrooms, it starts with grain spawn. Sterilized grain, which typically comes in bags like this one, is how we expand our culture into spawn. It's packed with moisture and nutrients to provide an all-you-can-eat buffet for our mycelium. And since it's sterilized, you don't have to worry about contamination. In short, it acts as a nutrient-rich home where mycelium, the root-like structure of fungi, can spread and grow before moving on to the next stage, fruiting. So, this liquid culture, or this plate culture, needs to be put into a bag of sterilized grain, like this one, so that it can colonize. Even the bag the grain is housed in is important, and it's a science all of its own. A mycology-ready grain bag has four key components. The bag itself, the filter patch, the injection port, and the sterilized grain inside. The bag itself is made of a temperature-tolerant polypropylene with a filter patch. This allows the bag to withstand the high temperatures and pressures needed to achieve sterilization. Inside, the grain provides a high-energy food source for the mycelium. It contains carbohydrates, proteins, and essential nutrients that fuel growth. The injection port is a sterile access point used for liquid culture inoculation. This allows you to keep the bag sealed to prevent contamination during inoculation in non-sterile environments, like your home or your grow space. The filter patch allows gas exchange while keeping airborne contaminants out. Mycelium feeds off oxygen and the nutrients in our grain, and this patch is essential to prevent growth of bad bacteria. For grain, a 0.2 micron filter is used. The micron size represents the filter's particle transmission rating which means that anything larger than 0.2 microns won't pass through. Most contaminants in the air and around us are larger than 0.2 microns, making this little patch extremely effective. Not all grain is the same. Different grains can be used for mushroom cultivation, each with its own benefits. Rye berries are a favorite for many cultivators. They're nutrient dense and hold moisture well, making them great for many different species. Millet can cover a high surface area with a lot of inoculation points, meaning mycelium can colonize it quickly. It's commonly used when fast colonization is a priority. Sorghum, also called Milo, is another popular choice. It's similar to millet, but slightly larger, offering a balance between colonization speed and moisture retention. Now that you know all about the common types of grain used for mushroom cultivation and the fancy bag that it's kept in, let's talk inoculation. Once you have your sterilized grain of choice, the next step is inoculation. Introducing mushroom mycelium so it can begin colonizing the grain. A common method is liquid culture. 
which again is a suspension of live mushroom mycelium in a nutrient rich solution. Liquid culture has a number of advantages over other inoculation methods. It's convenient, it can be done in non-sterile conditions, and can be made in large batches to inoculate hundreds of bags quickly and easily. For those new to cultivation, a liquid culture is a great start point with a very high success rate. Even better, you don't need to make it yourself. You can find it for sale online. And by the way, if you're finding this helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. We love mushrooms and are super nerds when it comes to growing them. So liking and subscribing tells us, hey, keep making this kind of stuff. Let's get started by preparing our inoculation area. First, make sure you have the following. Disposable gloves. 70% isopropyl alcohol. Check. Paper towels. Check. Can't forget my handy dandy lab coat. Check. And last but not least, eye protection. And of course you will need a clean tabletop or another hard surface to work on. Lab coat and eye protection are optional. It is making a lot more fun. Use a sterile needle for injecting liquid culture. Cleanliness is crucial. Always sterilize your workspace, tools, culture packaging, and grain bag before inoculation to prevent contamination. If your culture is stored in a vial, a jar, or a syringe, shake well before drawing it up or injecting. Insert the syringe into the bag's injection port and slowly inject two to five milliliters of liquid culture. After injecting, gently massage the bag to spread the culture evenly across the grain. Seal the injection site with tape for good measure. If you're inoculating multiple bags, you can sterilize your syringe with a torch between inoculations if needed, but be sure to let it cool completely. After that, store your inoculated grain bag in a warm, dark place between 70 and 75 Fahrenheit. Over the next one to two weeks, mycelium will spread throughout the grain. While liquid culture is a great method for inoculation, it can present its own challenges. Be sure to always inspect your liquid culture before using it. You should be able to easily distinguish the mycelium from the solution. Your solution should be clear. Cloudy liquid culture can be an indicator of contamination, which will cause your grain run to be compromised if injected. So let's talk about another common inoculation technique, agar cultures. Agar inoculation is another tried and true method of inoculation, which can result in stronger colonization and makes contamination much easier to spot. The trade-off is it requires a little bit more equipment and care during the inoculation process. Agar plate cultures are a solid medium where mushroom mycelium has already started growing. Agar allows you to work with isolated mycelium, ensuring you're using a clean, healthy culture for grain inoculation. Contamination is obvious. It would be visible as a rainbow of colors, but it is most commonly green, black, or fuzzy, wispy growth. As with most things mycology, sterility is critical. 
When working with agar, you'll want to use a still air box or a laminar flow hood to prevent airborne contamination. Be sure to wear your gloves, and as always, wipe everything down with 70% ISO. Use a sterile scalpel blade, or flame sterilize your scalpel before making transfers. A red hot scalpel ensures no bacteria or mold interfere with your culture. If you're using a still air box, don't use open flame inside as the vapors can ignite. So if you value your eyebrows, keep the flame outside. Cut a small wedge of mycelium from the agar plate, just enough to introduce into the grain bag. Open the grain bag carefully to avoid exposing it to unfiltered air. Drop the agar wedge directly onto the grain. Avoid touching the edges or surface of the bag. If you're inoculating multiple bags, repeat until you've used all your agar. Seal the grain bag to prevent contamination and keep the mycelium's environment stable. You can use a bag clip or a heat sealer. You may need to move the grain and agar around to ensure good contact. Gently work it into the grain and set it aside. Incubate at 70 to 75 Fahrenheit for one to two weeks. The mycelium will begin colonizing the grain, just as with the liquid culture. There's one more way to inoculate grain, and that is with other colonized grain. Now, I know it may sound silly, but it's one of the most effective ways to scale up any home grow. Let's dive in. Once your first grain bag is fully colonized, you can use it to inoculate new bags. This is called grain to grain transfer. Now at some point, you'll have needed to inoculate the grain with liquid or agar culture in the first place. So this method is a little more advanced. The advantage of doing this is that grain to grain transfers speed up the colonization compared to liquid culture or agar inoculation because the mycelium is already well established. So instead of waiting two weeks for liquid culture to spread, grain to grain can colonize a new bag in just seven to 10 days. Because you're working with open bags, a sterile environment is essential. A laminar flow hood or still air box is recommended to avoid contamination. Here's what you'll need. A still air box or laminar flow hood, scalpel and blades, 70% isopropyl alcohol, gloves, and paper towels. Be sure to sterilize everything, including your bags, and we're ready to start. Inside your workspace, open the colonized grain bag carefully to avoid introducing contaminants. Carefully pour a small amount, about five to 10% of the total grain, and sprinkle it evenly into the fresh grain bag. Seal the bag immediately after transferring. Incubate at 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The mycelium will spread quickly, often fully colonizing within seven to 10 days. Congrats! You are now an expert in inoculating grain. For all three of the inoculation methods, you can tell when your grain is fully colonized when it's nearly fully covered in beautiful white mycelium. So, what do you do once your grain is fully colonized? We'll get to that in a second. But first, let's address something important contamination in grain. Even if you follow all the correct steps perfectly, sometimes contamination does happen. It can occur within a grain bag, within the culture, or as a result of airborne contaminants entering during the inoculation process. If your grain isn't colonizing, if it has a funky smell, a sour smell, or it's growing green mold, it's time to toss it and try again. It's important not to get discouraged if you see contamination. Even the best of us make mistakes every now and then. All right. Once your grain is fully colonized through liquid culture, agar plates, or grain to grain, it's finally time to transfer it to a bulk substrate. Important to know, grain is not meant to be the final growing medium for mushrooms. But why can't we just grow mushrooms using grain alone? Well, because science. Essentially, grain is great as a fast-growing starter culture for the mycelium, thanks to its readily available nutrients and large surface area for colonization. However, the mushrooms need something other than just grain to produce the beautiful mushrooms you're used to seeing and eating. Hence, the use of bulkier substrates like straw or wood chips. They're essential for producing large quantities of mushrooms. 
For certain types of mushrooms, a substrate consisting of straw, vermiculite, cocoa choir, perlite, or even dung can be used. For wood-loving species like shiitake, lion's mane, and reishi, it'll be a hardwood-based mix, such as sawdust and soy hull, mushed into with water and packed into bags. That's what we'll be using. This hardwood-based substrate provides a slow, steady food source, allowing mycelium to fully colonize before fruiting. It mimics their natural growing environment while amplifying the results. To get ready for the transfer process, anyone? Can you guess what comes next? Maintain sterility. Sanitize your work area, your tools, and your bags before making your transfer, as always. If you're using a wood-based substrate, a 10% grain to substrate ratio is ideal. It's okay to eyeball it, but that's basically the ratio you're looking for. This provides enough mycelium to colonize efficiently without overwhelming the mix. First, open your sterilized wood substrate bag in a clean environment to prevent contamination. Sprinkle the grain evenly across the surface to ensure fast and uniform colonization. Seal the bag tightly to keep humidity stable while allowing for proper gas exchange. Mix gently, making sure the grain is evenly spread throughout the substrate. Store the inoculated bag at 70 to 75 Fahrenheit for two to four weeks. During this time, mycelium will colonize the wood substrate, preparing it for the next stage. Similar to grain, you'll be able to see the bag become covered with more and more mycelium, just at a slower pace. Once fully colonized, your wood-based substrate will be ready for fruiting. However, fruiting is an art of its own, and it's something that I'll talk about in another video. So, there you have it the complete guide to using sterilized grain for mushroom cultivation. Are you fascinated by the science of growing mushrooms and eager to grow some for yourself? Or overwhelmed by the process? Let us know in the comments below. And for all of you professional mycologists out there, if we missed anything, please feel free to sound off. We know you want to. And to everybody out there, like always, much love.